Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Let's kick this video off discussing the RTX 40 series of graphics cards, aka Lovelace. If you've just built a shiny new PC, you'll need a genuine copy of Windows so you can enjoy all of the features such as personalized themes and of course getting rid of that annoying activation watermark. We're partnering with WhoKeys to give you guys a great discount on Windows 10 keys. And throughout November, there's a 30% off discount by using the coupon code RGT during checkout. I've purchased several keys from them in the past under a personal non-RGT affiliated account, and they've all worked flawlessly with delivery being rather quick. After November, the coupon code reverts back to 25% off so if you want to pick up a copy of Windows for as little as $12 or a cheap and legit copy of Office, then check out the links in the video description below and use coupon code RGT. Now, for quite a long time, we've known that Lovelace is going to be significantly faster than the previous generation, also known as Ampere. I mean, this has been part and parcel of GPU upgrades from one architecture to the next generation architecture for, well, just about as long as we can remember. And we've also been hearing the performance target of between 2 to 2.4 times. Initially, I was hearing a 2 times increase, and then later on, I was hearing a 2.4. But more recently, there's been an awful lot of discussion regarding the power consumption for Lovelace and to a lesser degree, the RDNA free architecture from, well, AMD. But there's been a very interesting tweet from Grayman. I'll link his Twitter account in the description of this video, of course. The bottom line here is that he's basically insinuating that Lovelace could have up to a two times increase in power consumption versus what we have with Ampere. This also doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to see the power consumption and performance double from a SKU by SKU replacement. So what I mean by that is an RTX 3060 being replaced by the 4060 doesn't mean that the 4060 is going to be double the power consumption and double the performance. Instead, this is most likely pertaining to certain and specific flagship models, which generally speaking, are, of course, the most power-hungry. Now, there has already been a number of rumors concerning the RTX 30 refresh, which is going to be coming to desktop as well as mobile. Now, the mobile, as I've said multiple times now, is almost certainly going to be unveiled initially at CES. There's a few reasons that NVIDIA are releasing this refresh of sorts. I covered this more extensively in a recent Intel XC video. The long and the short of it, though, is that NVIDIA knows that Intel are going to pile on tons of pressure in the mobile sector. So, well, of course, they need to do something about this. And one of the easy ways they, well, I say easy in a loose sense, but one of the things they can do is release a refresh. So, yeah, just sticking to Lovelace for a second before we discuss more about the mobile section. It does look like that the next generation GPUs are going to be insanely power hungry. I'm even hearing that RDNA 3, as I've mentioned at the beginning of this video, is also going to be power hungry, but not quite in the same respect as what we have with NVIDIA. Now, exactly why this is, is quite difficult to know other than speculation. We could certainly say that things like, just for example, the, the uh, Infinity Cache technology of RDNA 3 is possibly going to be one reason that we could be seeing a lower power consumption from AMD, but I'm sure that there are a number of other things. But efficiency with RDNA was kind of baked into its design, with AMD, of course, not only designing RDNA for the consoles, but also very low power devices such as mobile. And this has led to excellent scalability up and down the stack. So technically speaking, this could be definitely a limitation on systems which have, well, lower airflow, for example, smaller form factor systems, but it's going to also be very interesting to me to see the cooler designs of these next generation cards. I mean, again, the RTX 3090 Super or TI or whatever it ends up being called, that thing is supposed to have like a power consumption of like 600 watts. That's what one of the rumors is anyway. So it's like... <laughs> Oh boy, I can't wait to see how that thing is going to be cooled. It's going to be very interesting to see how they're going to dissipate that amount of that amount of heat. I mean, yeah, it's it's a lot. And if you've, you know, even kind of moved your hand behind the, you know, venting of what the 
uh, card is exhausting. Obviously, the idea is to get as much heat out as possible. So when it's blowing hot air out of the back of a console or GPU, that's obviously a good thing because we don't want that on the, you know, GPU core, memory, VRM, that type of thing. But still, it's going to be very interesting to see how they actually dissipate all of this bloody heat. As for the power consumption itself, some people, they don't really care about the power consumption. You know, it's like, eh, it raises my electricity bill, but whatever. As for the power consumption itself, well, that is going to be interesting to see how not only reviewers handle that, but also gamers. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're seeing a drastic increase in power consumption, you're going to need to kind of think about that, not just in terms of airflow of your system, but also things like the PSU. And I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to really need a higher tier of PSU, like a thousand watts plus in high performance gaming systems, which you don't really need that right now. Also, while I've got you here about NVIDIA news, I'd like to quickly discuss the RTX 3080 Ti mobile variant. So as you would probably expect for a mobile card, there are definitely some cuts versus the desktop. So just quickly, I'd like to give credit to Kopiti7 Kimi for this discovery. And this is actually available on Geekbench. So again, I'll link his tweet in the description. It seems to be utilizing the GA103 core, although it's GA103 with an S at the end, and seems to sport 7,424 CUDA cores. Now, what's really interesting about this is this card is outfitted with 16 gigabytes of memory. And this, of course, means it's a 256-bit bus. So that's obviously a snip from what we have from the desktop by quite a margin. So this is certainly going to be a very fast card. But obviously, given it is, of course, in a mobile form factor, well, heat and power consumption are a thing. You can't have a GPU which is like guzzling several hundred watts especially even if you were just to plug the thing into a battery, just cooling the thing alone is going to be a problem. And um, also, there's a very interesting piece of news regarding RDNA 3. Now, again, I'd like to thank Grayman for this one. And for quite a while, we've been discussing about the chiplets inside RDNA 3, or Narve 31, 32, specifically Narve 33 and upwards, although there is some debate about whether 34 exists, but let's just ignore that for now. But 33 is basically a monolithic die, but 31 and 32, of course, are chiplets. And they utilize, well, as you would expect, different manufacturing processes. So, for example, the GCDs are manufactured using uh, TSMC's 5NM process, Whereas the MCD, basically the Infinity Cache chiplet, if you will, well, that seems to be manufactured using a 6NM process. But what's really interesting is that according to Grayman anyway, this is actually 3D stacked. Now, if you watch my video, um, which I don't know what, what order they're going to be processed by YouTube, but I'm actually covering the AMD event today anyway. And they actually were kind of discussing more extensively of their 3D stacking capabilities. Now, these so far have been somewhat detailed, although the implementation will be a bit different for RDNA, um, but on not only the uh, CPU stack with Ryzen and also Milan, they're showing Milan X at the event, but also, um, well, CDNA 2. And obviously the fact of the matter is, that 3D stacking and the capabilities of AMD to do this essentially empower them to do a whole bunch of different crap. And I've mentioned before that while it's very easy to say something like, well, the chip has like three chiplets, I have said uh, multiple times now that it's not really that easy. You know, it's not really all re really that simple. At the end of the day, it's the actual interconnectivity of these chiplets which are so important because not only are there, well, tons of technical issues like well, making sure that each chip has enough memory bandwidth, which is a fairly obvious one after all, that's one of the jobs of in the Infinity Cache. But you also need to make certain that when you have multiple uh, chiplets, uh, especially when they're doing compute tasks, that they're able to synchronize data and perform t uh, tasks in parallel. So there's an awful lot of work here, which quite frankly, I think we just don't really know about. So the 3D stacking approach does make sense, and I kind of expect that we're going to be actually really blown away by what AMD have done with their design. I'm really looking forward to actually seeing an architectural breakdown of Narve 31 and 32, as the 3D stacking tech seems to be for 31 and 32 from what Grayman has said. And honestly, it kind of matches up with what I've said a few times on the channel as well. I think it's going to be really cool.
with what we're going to be seeing in future tech uh, for all of the different vendors. But with that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, well, by golly gosh, you know what to do. You leave a likey on the video and, of course, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.